Hello and welcome back to another Kids Reads Factivities video where we talk about facts and do some activities related to those facts. I'm your host Julia from the Hardesty Regional Library and today's Factivities topic is weather. Did you hear that thunder just now? Oh my goodness. It's very ominous today. I'm sorry. <laughs> Now, when you think of weather, I bet you think of the big things like rain or snow or maybe even a tornado. <laughs> and you are right, those are weather events. But the actual definition of weather is really quite shocking. According to this book, Weather and Natural Disasters, weather is the state of the atmosphere. Mm, that thing that's around you on the outside. At any given time. And meteorologists are the scientists who study the atmosphere and the weather events that take place there. And like I said, weather events are the big things like rain or snow and, of course, tornadoes. <laughs> now, weather in an area over an extended period of time, at least 30 whole years of it, is called climate. So the difference between weather and climate is that weather is the state of the air at any given time, and the climate is the overall behavior of the weather over a long period of time. In other words, climate is what you expect and weather is what you get. You can't weather a tree, but you can climb it. <laughs> uh, jokes about the weather can be funny to a certain degree. <laughs> Stop. If you want more information about the difference between weather and climate and the scientists that study those, try this book out. Out of the Lab, Extreme Jobs in Science, Climatologist and Meteorologist. Okay, let's get started. These activities are not to be missed. According to this very cool book, Ultimate Weatherpedia, if you live in the U.S., there are 40 trillion gallons of water lingering above your head at any given time. And what is it the raindrops always say? Two's company, three's a cloud. <laughs> That's a good one. I like that one. We know that when a cloud collects water, eventually the water gets so heavy it drops right out of the sky as precipitation. This activity demonstrates exactly that. This activity comes from Super Simple Weather Projects, Science Activities for Future Meteorologists. That could be you. For this activity, you will need a glass container, shaving cream, small plastic cups of water, which are optional, a dropper, like this, and food coloring. I chose blue. Fill the large glass container or cup with water. Like so. Add a layer of shaving cream to the top. You don't want to make it too thick. So now we have this cloud on our water. Next, use the food coloring or if you prefer, you can dilute the food coloring in little cups of water and use a dropper so you have more control of the colors and the amount of water that goes in. But drop the food coloring over the cloud. And eventually, I am going to use the dropper actually. Let me see. Eventually, you will see the rain go through the cloud. Pretty cool, huh? Hey, speaking of falling, what falls but never gets to the ground? Temperature. Tornadoes are a naturally occurring destructive force of nature. We measure the severity of a tornado, unfortunately, by how much damage they do, as that can help us estimate the wind speeds of the tornado. In this book, The Tornado Scientist, you can see this diagram of how we rate tornadoes by the enhanced Fujita scale. The tornado wind speeds of 65 to 85 miles per hour, meaning an EF0, will do light to no damage while the ever increasing wind speeds to over 200 miles an hour can cause significantly more damage. 
As we live in Oklahoma, which is part of Tornado Alley, we should all be aware of and take precautions to shelter in our homes and at school in our declared safe spots when a tornado warning is in place. Tornadoes can be scary, but it's okay if you think they're totally awesome as long as you stay safe during an actual storm. A vortex of wind connecting from the sky to the ground and traveling across a field? That blows me away! If you're interested in finding out more about tornadoes, definitely check out the Tornado Scientist, which takes you on a journey with a real meteorologist, tornado scientist, radar expert, and storm chaser. That's all the same person. <laughs> now, for the activity. This one also comes from Super Simple Weather Projects. For this project, you will need a clear jar with a lid, water, a measuring spoon, some dish soap, some vinegar, and glitter. Although I don't actually have glitter here, so I'm going to use something you'll see in just a second what it is. Fill the jar up with water about three quarters full. Then, using a measuring spoon, add one teaspoon of dish soap and one teaspoon of vinegar. Then, add your glitter in. I'd say about a tablespoon. But I don't have any glitter here, so I'm going to use used coffee grounds from this morning. I mean, we'll see. It looks like muddy water now. <laughs> Use what you got. <laughs> okay, seal the jar tightly, like so. Make sure it's really tight because you don't want this stuff to go all over the place. Now swirl the jar in a circular motion and set it up straight. Now, you can see the water turning in there, but the coffee grounds are so dark that they're not actually showing the tornado in the center. I'm sorry, I thought it would work, but I bet yours with glitter will work at home. I almost guarantee it. <laughs> uh, with yours, you should see a tornado-like vortex in the jar. Now, my results varied on success, but, tornado jar, take that for a spin. Did you know that pine cones can predict weather? It's true. When weather is dry, pine cones will open up. And when it's wet, what do you think happens? If you guess shooting out lightning from the center like a plasma globe, you are wrong. <laughs> but if you said close up tight, you are right. That's what they do. Man, nature thinks it's so cool, but it's just a front. This project comes from sciencesparks.com. Find a pine cone or three and set them outside. Observe their behavior day to day. When are they open and when are they closed? What is the weather doing during those times? A mystery you can solve, so go get pine cone hunting. Speaking of cool, this book right here tells you lots of cool weather-related things, including unexpected things you would not think were weather-related, like this page, dedicated to the three-toed sloth. As well as this one that says that the Everglades in Florida is the only place on Earth where alligators and crocodiles live together. What's the difference, you ask? Well, one will see you later and the other will see you in a while. If you don't get it now, it'll come to you. <laughs> okay, everybody, I hope you learned something cool today. I wish you luck on your activities. Thank you for joining me. Make sure to check out more weather-related fun on the Kids Reads Curious World Weather Wizards page. I'm Julia from the Hardesty Regional Library. Stay safe, love each other, and I'll see you again another time.